we're going to go over six example problems that are about finding the diagonal of a rectangle. This will give us a look at some of the different ways a problem can be phrased and some of the slight differences between the problems. They're all very straightforward, so let's get into it. A rectangle has a height of 16 and a base of 20. Notice this is a problem that isn't giving us units. We just have to work with the numbers. We don't have to worry about inches or centimeters or anything like that. So what is the length of the diagonal of this rectangle rounded to the nearest hundredth. Beginning with a picture is always tremendously helpful, so we'll just draw a rectangle here. We know the height of the rectangle is 16 and its base is 20, so maybe we call this the height, has a length of 16, and this is the base whose length is 20. I want to point out we could just as easily flip the way that we assign these numbers. So we could say that this is the base with length 20 and this is the height with length 16. We would still get the same answer. The math is exactly the same. So you don't have to have any special knowledge to pick which side gets which length. All you have to remember is that once you assign a length to a particular side, since this is a rectangle, the opposite side will have the same length. So if this side has length 20, then this side has length 20. If this side has length 16, then this side has length 16. Of course, in this rectangle, since we've drawn this side to look shorter, it just seems reasonable to call that the side with length 16. If the stuff I just said confused you, then it probably wasn't a problem that you were having anyways, so don't worry about it. We want to find the diagonal of this rectangle, so let's draw the diagonal, and now what do we do? Well, this is a rectangle, so its angles are right angles, and we can apply the Pythagorean theorem. Here with the diagonal, we've got a right triangle, since this is a right angle. We know that this leg of the right triangle has a length of 16, and this leg must have a length of 20. The Pythagorean theorem tells us that the sum of the squares of the legs of a right triangle, so 16 squared plus 20 squared, that's the sum of the squares of the legs, is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. We'll call the hypotenuse D for diagonal, so this sum is equal to D squared. 16 squared is 256 and 20 squared is 400. So we have that 256 plus 400 is equal to D squared. This of course means that D squared is equal to 656. Then we solve for the diagonal by taking the square root of both sides plug the square root of 656 into a calculator, and you'll find that rounded to the nearest hundredth, our answer is 25.61. And that is our answer. The diagonal length of our rectangle rounded to the nearest hundredth is 25.61. So instead of equals here, if you want, you might put approximately. D is approximately 25.61. Now we can start to speed up a bit. One side of a rectangle is nine centimeters and another is 11 centimeters. How long is the rectangle's diagonal? Again, we'll go ahead and draw a rectangle, something like that. This side has a length of 9 centimeters, and another side is 11 centimeters. Remember, since this is a rectangle, we know that these two measurements refer to sides that are not opposite each other, because if the sides were opposite each other, they'd have to have the same length. Now, to find the length of the rectangle's diagonal, let's go ahead and draw our diagonal in there. Notice that this appears different from the previous diagonal we drew, which went from the bottom left corner to the top right corner. The diagonals of a rectangle, however, are congruent, so it doesn't matter which diagonal you draw, you'll get the same answer. Works pretty nicely. And again, since this is a rectangle, we've got right angles, so right here is a right triangle. 
We'll call its diagonal C just to mix things up, and applying the Pythagorean theorem tells us that the sum of the squares of the legs of the right triangle, 9 centimeters squared plus 11 centimeters squared, is equal to the square of the hypotenuse, which is C squared. 9 centimeters squared is 81 centimeters squared, plus 11 centimeters squared, that's going to be 121 centimeters squared. Remember, we have to square both the number and the units. And then this is equal to C squared. 81 and 121 are both being measured in centimeters squared, so we can combine them as like terms. 81 centimeters squared plus 121 centimeters squared is 202 centimeters squared. And this is equal to C squared. Then again, we would take the square root of both sides to finish solving for our diagonal length C. So we would have that C is equal to the square root of 202 centimeters squared. Notice in the question, we're not asked to round our answer to any particular decimal value, so I would just leave the answer in exact form, which means we're not going to want to plug this into a calculator and approximate its value. Instead, we'll just want to simplify it. To simplify an expression under a square root, we want to take any perfect squares out of the square root. For example, centimeters squared is a perfect square, so we can take that out of the square root and just leave it as centimeters. So what we did there was we took the square root of the perfect square and brought that outside. So this is equal to the square root of 202 centimeters, because the square root of centimeters squared is centimeters. If 202 had any factors that were perfect squares, we could take those out of the square root as well. However, it does not. 202 factors in to 2 times 101, and these are both prime numbers. Since 202 doesn't have any number appearing multiple times in its prime factorization, it doesn't have any factors that are perfect squares, and so this is fully simplified. So our rectangle's diagonal, C, is the square root of 202 centimeters. If you like approximations, that's about 14.2 centimeters. One last thing I'll point out is since we were given the side lengths in centimeters, we know that centimeters is how we're measuring length. So our diagonal will also be measured in centimeters. In other words, we don't have to mess around with the units in our computation. We can leave them out and know that our final answer is going to be in centimeters. We'll do that in the upcoming problems so you know what I mean. Here we've got a little bit of an algebra problem, asking something a little different from us. We're given a side length of our rectangle, and we're given the diagonal length of our rectangle, and we want to find x, the missing side. To do this, we just have to apply the same method that we've been using, but instead of solving for the diagonal, we'll have to solve for this other side. Again, remember, what we have here is a right triangle, and so we can apply the Pythagorean theorem. That tells us that the sum of the squares of the legs of the right triangle, so 4 squared plus x squared, whatever x is, we don't know, and it doesn't matter, because we'll figure it out, this must be equal to the square of the hypotenuse, which is 4 square root of 5 squared. Then we just need to solve for x. We need to get it by itself. We've got that 4 squared is equal to 16, and of course we still have our x squared, and this sum is equal to, over here on the right, 4 square root of 5 squared is equal to 16, that's the 4 squared, multiplied by the square root of 5 squared. The square root of 5 squared is 5, so this is 16 times 5, on the right side of the equation, and 16 times 5 is equal to 80. 
Once more, to get that, we just squared 4 and multiplied that by the square of the square root of 5. That's 16 times 5, which is 80. Then, as we try to get x by itself, we may subtract 16 from both sides of this equation, giving us that x squared is equal to 64. And that works out very nicely. Taking the square root of both sides to solve for x gives that x is equal to the square root of 64, and the square root of 64, you may recall, is equal to 8. Some of you may also know that negative 8 squared is equal to 64, but we're talking about lengths of a shape, so we're concerned with positive measurements. Also, remember that this notation, this square root notation, is called the principal square root. This refers specifically to the positive square root, so positive 8 is our answer x being equal to negative 8 would make this equation true, but negative 8 is not a solution that we care about. And so there it is. 8 is the missing side length of this rectangle. On to the next problem. A standard NBA basketball court is 94 feet long by 50 feet wide. Michael runs from the bottom left corner of the court to the top right corner. How far did Michael run rounded to the nearest foot? Here, of course, if you didn't already know, you would assume that an NBA basketball court must be a rectangle, and we're given that such a court is 94 feet long, so we'll say this side has a length of 94 feet by 50 feet wide, so we'll say this side over here is 50 feet. We're told that Michael runs from the bottom left corner of the court to the top right, from the bottom left up to the top right. Hey look, that's convenient because that is a diagonal of our rectangle. We want to know how far did Michael run rounded to the nearest foot, so we just have to find the length of this diagonal rounded to the nearest foot. Remember, since this side is 94 feet, the side opposite is also 94 feet, and we can consider this right triangle. We'll just apply the Pythagorean theorem and have the problem solved quickly. Remember, since we're measuring distance in feet, we know those will be the units of our diagonal, so we don't have to include units in our computation. The Pythagorean theorem tells us that the sum of the squares of the legs of a right triangle, 50 squared plus 94 squared, must equal the square of the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse we'll call d for diagonal, and so that's equal to d squared. Here you might bust out your calculator to take care of these big numbers. 50 squared is 2,500 and we're adding that to 94 squared, which is 8,836, and this is equal to d squared. You could add these numbers by hand or using a calculator. What you would get is that d squared is equal to this sum, which is 11,336. Then we just have to take the square root of both sides to solve for our diagonal d. So our diagonal D is equal to the square root of 11,336, which is about 106.47. But remember, we want to know how far Michael ran rounded to the nearest foot. He ran the length of our diagonal, so if we take that diagonal length and round it to the nearest foot, that would be 106 feet. And that is our answer. Here we've got a problem very similar to the algebra problem that we had before, but here we're not given a diagram, so we have to be a little bit more careful to make sure we know what we're looking at and what's being asked of us. We're told that ABCD is a rectangle. This means that A, B, C, and D are the vertices of a rectangle, and these vertices are named in clockwise order. So we may draw a rectangle and then label its vertices in that order, A, B, C, D. Then we're told that the length of the segment AB is equal to 3, so we could label this with A3. You may or may not be familiar with this notation, I'll just describe it here briefly. AB with a line over it, that is referring to this segment, the segment AB. 
Then the bars on either side are like absolute value bars. They measure the magnitude of that line segment, as in they measure its length. So this is the length of the line segment AB. Sometimes you may see these absolute value bars not used, and it may just be written that the segment AB equals 3 but I like to use the absolute value bars. We're also given that the length of the segment AC is 17. Notice that AC is not a side of our rectangle. In fact, AC is a diagonal of our rectangle. So here, we're given the diagonal length of the rectangle as 17. And then we're asked to find the length of this side AD. So now this is just like our algebra problem. Maybe we call the length of AD X. Remember that this here is a right triangle. And since this side has a length of three, the opposite side also has a length of three. And we can apply the Pythagorean theorem to this right triangle. The Pythagorean theorem tells us that the sum of the squares of the legs of the right triangle x squared plus 3 squared must be equal to the square of the hypotenuse, 17 squared. 3 squared is 9, so we have that x squared plus 9 is equal to 17 squared, which is 289. Then we may subtract 9 from both sides of this equation to get x squared by itself, which leaves us with x squared is equal to 280. Then taking the square root of both sides gives us that x is equal to the square root of 280. So that is the length of this side of the rectangle. But of course, we may want to simplify this. Remember that 28 is equal to four times seven. So 280 is equal to four times 7d. So that means that x, which is equal to the square root of 280, is equal to the square root of 4 times 70. But 4 is a perfect square, so we can take its square root out of the radical. That gives us that this is equal to the square root of 4, which is 2, times the square root of 70 left inside the radical. 70 has no factors that are perfect squares, so this is fully simplified. And so our answer, the length of the side AD of our rectangle is two times the square root of 70. We've got one more easy example. If you haven't tried any of the previous examples on your own, definitely give this one a swing before watching the solution. A rectangle has a length of 12 meters and a width of five meters. What is the diagonal of the rectangle? Let's get straight down to business and draw our rectangle here. We'll say this side is 12 meters and this side, the width is five meters. And then we want to find the diagonal of this rectangle. Drawing the diagonal gives us this wonderful right triangle and we can apply the Pythagorean theorem. Let's call the diagonal D and get down to business. The Pythagorean theorem tells us that the sum of the squares of the legs of our right triangle, five squared plus 12 squared, must equal the square of the hypotenuse, D squared. Again, notice since these lengths were given in meters, we know that our diagonal will also be measured in meters, so we don't have to include the units in our calculation. Five squared is 25, 12 squared is 144, so we have that 25 plus 144 is equal to d squared. This means that d squared is equal to this sum, which is 169. Then we take the square root of both sides to solve for the diagonal d, which gives us that d is the square root of 169. You may recognize that that is 13. And that's the answer. 13 is the diagonal length of our rectangle.